From Hollywood, the George Burns and Gracie Allen Show for Hormel and Spam. Crazy people. Spam, rip up, boom, spam. George Burns and Gracie Allen. Or the show where there's orchestra for singing glee with a smoothie street. Last but not least, and who is Bud Heaston? question, friends, and it will pay you to know the answer. Ready for the question? All right. What is an easy way to serve the family a swell main course for dinner that costs but a few cents? There's no magic about it. Just open a can of Spam, S-P-A-M, and bake according to the simple directions on the label. Takes only a jiffy, and you'll set before the family a delicious taste surprise that satisfies even the huskiest appetite. That's because Spam is grand-tasting meat, and baked, it certainly makes a hit. The perfect combination of juicy pork shoulder and ham meat, originated by Hormel, gives Spam extra flavor, extra goodness. Try a Spam bake for dinner tomorrow. Just be sure you ask your food dealer for S-P-A-M Spam. The stars of our big happy family, George and Gracie. Uh, thank you very, very much. Tonight, ladies oh, and gentlemen. Oh, George, where's Gracie? She's not here. Tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Well, George, can you do a show without Gracie? Certainly I can do a show without her. Do you think I need Gracie? Certainly, Bud. He needs Gracie about as much as Dorothy Lamour needs a sarong. Yeah. Oh, yeah? Well, listen, I happen to have a lot of talent. That... Well, I'll answer you later. <clears throat> Hello? Uh, this is Sam Smith. I'm Gracie Allen speaking. Gracie, where are you? We're doing a broadcast, and you're supposed to be here. I couldn't get down on account of my granddaddy's very sick. He was on the floor all last night, and we're awfully worried. He was on the floor? Yes. What about the bed? Well, we couldn't use that. We had a party here last night. Where could we put the hats and coats? <laughs> well... Gracie, where's your granddaddy now? He's down in the kitchen with a temperature of 105 and we're all... He has a temperature of 105? Yes, and we're... Well, down... why'd you got him in the kitchen? Well, he's defrosting the icebox. <laughs> your, uh, your granddaddy's in the fridge there? For seven hours. Well, aren't you afraid he'll freeze? Oh, that's impossible. Every hour we open the fridge there and ask him if he's cold. He doesn't ask us. <laughs> Look, uh... Gracie, we're doing a broadcast. Well, what station? I must listen in. Well, never mind. That's a smart idea, putting a man with a temperature in a fridge of air. I suppose to cure him, they'll put a nice pack on his head and a hot water bottle on his feet. Oh, George, all they need to use is a can of Spam. Can of Spam? Sure, cold or hot, it hits, hits the, the spot. spot. Oh, yes. But <laughs> you're a regular Dr. Kildare. Look, everybody, uh, not that I need Gracie, but I think we ought to go over to Gracie's house and do the broadcast. Might make an old man happy. Well, if it's going to make you happy, George, let's go. Oh. <laughs> Quiet. Bueno, podemos hacer una cosa. Yo tengo un carro nuevo. Si quieren, yo puedo llevar. Yes, guitar player, I know. What is it, Senor Lee? Uh, why don't you drive down in my car? I just got a brand new rooster. <laughs> a rooster? Sí, si, Senor. A car made by General Mothers. <laughs> And not, it's not General Mothers, it's General Motors. Oh. A, a mother is, uh, well, for example, when you were a baby, who combed your hair? That's what I'd like to know. The part isn't straight. <laughs> well, quiet. Come on, everybody. We've got to get to Gracie's house. Oh, uh, well, here we are at Gracie's house. I'll ring the doorbell. George, you better knock on the door. The bell doesn't work. Well... This is the house, all right. Oh, hello, 
I'll just let you get here. Well, I give up. Hello, everybody. Hello. Gracie, do you know that you're not all there? I know. I just had my tonsils removed. Tonsils removed? That annoys me. <laughs> that's, uh, that's all I've got. <laughs> Say, Gracie, what's the matter with your granddaddy? Oh, he doesn't take care of himself. He inhales cigars. Well, what's wrong with him? Well, most people just inhale the smoke. <laughs> Look, Gracie, you'll have to excuse me if I run away just before the broadcast is over. You see, I've got a date with a little redhead, and she won't wait. Well... A redhead? Say, Poopsie, how do you get all these gals? Well, well, why shouldn't he? George is a good dancer, he's a swell dresser, he's romantic, spends lots of money. Continue on next page. Arnie, don't read that part. <laughs> Well, come on, everybody. Say, right Gracie, through this long... Gracie, Gracie, what is this? You've got barbed wire on the banisters? Well, you know, my granddaddy likes to slide down the banisters. Oh, I see, and that stops him. No, it doesn't stop him, but it slows him down a bit. <laughs> I think I know what you mean. Uh, it is. It is. It is. It isn't. It is. No, it isn't. It... <laughs> Who, uh, who are they? Oh, they've been living here for over a year. Well, who are they? I don't know. Chrissy, you know, this house is filled with imbeciles. Well, I better tell Granddaddy you're all here. Well, never mind that. We better start the broadcast. What's tonight's program about, George? It's about Thanksgiving. What's that? What's that? Look, Gracie, as far back as you can remember, what always happened in, in, uh, in November? Roosevelt was elected. <laughs> Well, I'll try to explain it to you. All right. You see, in 1620, the first Americans arrived in a new land to make a fresh start. Uh -huh. they, si they decided to build homes. And do you, do you know one of the first things they did? They applied for FHA loans. <laughs> FHA loans didn't come until 300 years later. Well, you've got to go through a lot of red tape before you get the money. <laughs> anyway, these people, these people were called Puritans. What's that? What's that? Did you ever read of those people who suffered and were punished in stocks? Oh, in 1929, some of my best friends were Puritans. <laughs> well, anyway, these people were so grateful for finding a freedom in a new country that they killed a turkey and called it Thanksgiving. Oh, what a cute name for a turkey. <laughs> and the custom still remains. Even today, we chop the heads off turkeys. How can you knock off all their heads at once? A turkey only has one head. Then where do all the necks come from? Uh, last year, my sister got a neck, my brother got a neck, my uncle got a neck. Oh, well, this is the end. Uh, that's the part my daddy got. <laughs> Look, smoothies, bad Charlie and Little, will you sing a song while I try to explain to Gracie what Thanksgiving is? Please. <laughs> Well, all right. 
People walking around and nobody knowing them. And this furniture. What kind of furniture is this? Well, it comes from the Hollywood Furniture Company. Yeah, but what about the period? Oh, pardon me. It comes from the Hollywood Furniture Company. Period. <laughs> yeah, that's what I meant. Oh, say, Gracie, where's your kitchen? I want to get a spam one. Oh, Bud, we haven't got any spam in the Frigidaire. No spam in the Frigidaire? Not in the Frigidaire. Spam doesn't need any refrigeration. Oh, shucks. <laughs> I forgot. I'll hate myself in the morning. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, oh, <laughs> okay, what's that? That's my granddaddy, he's sliding down the banister. <laughs> he's sliding down a barbed wire banister? Well, he does it 20 times a day and the doctor told him to stop. Well, I imagine he would. Sure, bad for his heart. <laughs> Well, I hope the kid makes a three-point landing. It is. It isn't. It is. It isn't. It is. It isn't. <laughs> Gracie, these fellows have been living in your house for over a year and you don't know who they are? That's right. Well, why don't you ask them? I don't talk to strangers. <laughs> well, this is some house. George, sure, I better go and find Granddaddy and give him his medicine. You see, he hasn't got a nurse anymore. Oh, he had a nurse, huh? Yes. And the only way he'd take his medicine was when the nurse would kiss him after every teaspoonful. It was awful stuff. Bitter, huh? No, he has many teeth. <laughs> well, let's get this over with. All right, let's find your granddaddy and give him this medicine. Boy, what a house. I've never seen. Hey, sound man. Four years in Harvard. Why are you sitting out in the hall all by yourself, soaking? A big Harvard-Yale game this year, and I won't be there. Well, why don't you go? Not after the sad experience I had last year. There I was at the stadium. It was the last quarter. The score was nothing to nothing. Just as Yale was making a touchdown, somebody stuck a gun in my back and held me up. Well, there were millions of people there. Why didn't you yell? What? And have them think I was rooting for Yale? <laughs> Well, come on, Gracie. Uh, hey, George, George, when you meet this little red-headed girl tonight, why don't you take her to the Follies Berger? It's a swell show. Ah, oh, those girly shows are all the same, Arnie. Take away their feathers and their little umbrellas and what have you got? High blood pressure. <laughs> oh, quiet. Well, here's Granddaddy's room. Oh, well, look, Gracie, before we all go in, what's the matter with your Granddaddy? Well, we really don't know. In the middle of the night, we heard strange noises and we ran into Granddaddy's room and there he was shaking all over. He was shaking all over? Yes. Well, what did you do? What did we do? We sent for a doctor. Well, what did the doctor do? Well, he took the Madame Lazanga record off the patrol and we all went back to sleep again. <laughs> Kid has probably got lumbatism. <laughs> Hiya, Grace. Hiya, oh. Grandpa. Well, what's the matter, Grandpa? Don't you feel well? No, Georgie boy. <laughs> Say, hand me that picture of Hedy Lamar on a sleeping tablet. <laughs> well, I can't find Hedy Lamar's picture. Do you want the do you want this one of Van Sheraton? No, I'm saving her until I feel better. Yahoo! <laughs> well, wait, Grandpa, I'll look in this closet. It is. It isn't. It is. It isn't. I can't. <laughs> Gracie, can't somebody else in your family give him the medicine? I've got a date with a little redhead. Well, my mother's at her sewing club, and my daddy went downtown to vote, and my your brother... Your daddy went downtown to vote? Yes, and my brother... The election out... was over two weeks ago. I know, but my daddy's a Republican, and he never gives up. Listen, <laughs> Gracie, try to understand this. I've got a date oh, with a girl. Senor Burns, I can't Senor stand this. Senor Burns, look out. Don't get excited. You'll break a blood weasel. <laughs> well, don't worry about me. And besides, you said that wrong. Oh, pardon me. Uh, don't get excited. You'll break a, a blood, weasel. <laughs> well, that's much better. Hey, buddy boy. Well, what is it, granddaddy? Buddy boy, would you mind reaching in that coat pocket and getting me a cigar? Oh, what coat, Grandpa? The one George is wearing. <laughs> there aren't any cigars in my pocket. You mean you didn't get anything with that suit? <laughs> That was a pretty good one, Corny. Oh, quiet. 
Even if I did have a cigar, if I did get a cigar with it, why should I give it to you? You're the tightest old man I ever met. You never gave anybody anything. Oh, Judge, you shouldn't say that to my granddaddy when he's so sick. He gave you something. When did he ever give me something? Tonight. What did he give me? The measles. The measles? <laughs> the measles, he, sh he shouldn't have kept it a secret. He didn't. He's been spreading it all around. <laughs> Why do they ever go into this crazy house? Oh. Gracie, what's, what's that? Shh, shh. She's practicing up in the attic. Who's practicing? My grandmother. Your grandmother? Gracie, will you tell your grandmother to stop? We can't continue talking if she's going to make all that noise upstairs. But this is the craziest house. Listen to that. Beat, 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 meat, eat, eat, meat. I say there, lady, when a shopping you go, here's some news that you should know. Help me out, George, I've gone this far. I'll beat it out, bud. A to the bar. Spam is the meat that you should buy. Spam is different, and here is why. We use pork shoulder to make Spam sweet, and the ham it takes for extra good meat. The extra good flavor that you get in Spam got there, folks, cause we added ham. Hormel started this new kind of meat, seasoned it better, made it grand to eat. I say, Senor Burns, serve Spam for lunch. This delicious meat is good to crunch. Look, Senor Lee, it's crunch, not crunch. Crunch, 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 crunch. You buy it all the time if you try it lunch. To get the real thing to put on your table, look for this sentence on the Spam can label. Pork shoulder meat with hand meat added. Proof that Spam is really different. My, 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 that doesn't fit. 
Yeah, that's right, Gracie. That's the worst one yet. Nothing is just like Sam, my friend. And so with this, our poem ends. When a shopping you'd go tomorrow, ma'am, ask for S-P-A-M Spam. Slice it, dice it, fry it, bake it, cold or hot, Spam hits the spot. Look, George, if there's a possibility of your having the measles, I wouldn't keep that date with that redhead. Well, don't worry about me, Artie. I'm going out right now and get myself inoculated. Well, why do it tonight? Why don't you wait until New Year's Eve? <laughs> Look, Gracie, inoculation prevents sickness. You see, millions of germs can live on the head of a pin. How can they eat that stuff? <laughs> they use a knife and fork. Oh! Well, I'm going to get out of this house before it's too late. There, mister, where do you think you're going? I'm going out, officer. Why? Oh, no, you're not. Nobody leaves this house. It's quarantined. But I'm George Burns. I haven't got anything. I've heard you on the air, brother, and you ain't kidding. <laughs> Let me tell you Get something. Get back in there. Oh. <laughs> well, this is a fine thing. And I've got myself... Oh, look who's here. Hello, George. Are you back from your date already? Did you meet that girl? Did you kiss her? Gracie, I was stopped by a cop. Oh, that's what always happens in those park cars. I knew you'd understand me. Once I was in the park car with a precious fellow, and you know what he said to me? Will you be reasonable? That's what he said to me. Oh, stop. That's what I said to him. Gracie, I didn't even get out of the door. There's a cop outside. He says your house is quarantined. He's crazy. It's ducko. <laughs> Well, never mind. I'll see you later. I've got to keep this date. I wonder where this door leads to. Oh, wrong door. <laughs> Isn't that silly? The room closet. Oh, oh look at the hello, George. When did you get back? Did you have a nice time with the redhead? Gracie, I was in the broom closet. Oh, her husband came home, huh? <laughs> Look, I'm trying to get out of this house of yours. Well, I've got an idea. Let's what, do what they do in the movies. Now, I'll tie this bed sheet around you and let you out of the window. Hey, that's not a bad idea. Here, put it on me right oh, here. Oh, then I'll tie this end to the bed. All right. All ready, George. Climb out of the window. Well, here I go. <laughs> Ouch! Gracie! Gracie! What? What part of the bed did you tie it to? The pillow! The pillow! <laughs> I told you the place was quarantined. Now get back in that house. Oh. Hmm. Well, look who's there. Hello, George. Are you back from the date already? Did you have a nice time for the redhead? See, I was... I almost killed myself. I just went through that window. Oh, her husband came home again, huh? You know, you could use another ounce of brain. Uh-uh, not me. I'm overweight now. No matter where I go, that cop is there. I wish he'd stick to his beat. Stick to his what? Beat. Beat. Me. Me. Spam is the meat that, that you should, should eat. eat. Spam, Spam is, I know that. I know that. You here. should try. I know that, but we've done it before. This poetry is going from bad to worse. Oh. <laughs> it's just a little slip. <laughs> uh, look at me. I'm filthy. How can I get washed up? Just keep on telling those jokes, brother. <laughs> Gracie, where's the washroom? Right down the hall. You can't miss it. It's the one with the gasoline pump in front of it. <laughs> gasoline pump? Sure. My grandmother's a tourist, and we like to make her feel at home. Well, I'll go in there and get cleaned up. It is. It is. It is. It is. It is. Wait it a minute. Wait a minute. All you guys have been doing is arguing. What are you arguing about? I claim this Thursday is the real Thanksgiving, and Joe says it isn't. Well, it is. It is. It is. It is. It is. It is. <laughs> Gracie, I've got to get out of here. Well, George, why, why don't you go up on the roof and fly down the drain peep, and then when you get to the, the yard... Uh, the, the, the drain peep? Yeah, when you get to the yard... The, the, the drain peep? Oh, oh, pardon me. I was out with Senorli last night. Oh. <laughs> Keep on going out with him, and you won't be able to speak English. Senor Burns, when you say that, smile. <laughs> smile? Yes. S-M-E-L-L. -L. Smile. <laughs> Thank you.
that smell. You're perfect. <laughs> oh, please, everything happens to me. Here, I've got a date with a girl. I'm all messed up. I scrape my nose. Huh, what a pickle. Looks more like a banana. <laughs> oh, yeah? Well, my face happens to be all right. Doesn't bother me. Maybe that's the kind of you're standing behind it. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Well, I've just got to get out of here. Mr. Burns. What does it sound, man? Just look at this goldfish bowl. It's a rhapsody in glass. It's made of pure quartz silicate. Time like this has got to impress me with his education. There must be some way out. They found them. What happened to the goldfish that were in that bowl? Ask me, what did you do with those goldfish? Forgive me, Miss Ellen. I couldn't help it. Once a Harvard man, always a Harvard man. <laughs> well, there must be some way out hey, of here. Tom, I don't mind you eating the goldfish, but Tom Harmon is going to get pretty angry. Why, Tom Harmon is that great Michigan football player. Well, it's also the name of our cat. You call your cat Tom Harmon? Well, yeah, that's in the kind of every time he gets loose, he makes ten yards. <laughs> Hey, wait a minute. Why didn't I think of this before? Crazy, where's the chimney? You're right there. Well, goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. I'm going up the chimney. Goodbye. I will go through it for a woman. Well, here it is. I'm out. There's the blue sky. Blue sky, nothing. That's my uniform, you see. Get back in there. Oh! Oh! oh. Will some one person in every family listening tonight do us just one more small favor? All we want to ask is that you remind Mother to get a can of Spam when she goes shopping tomorrow. You'll be doing a bigger favor for yourself because Spam is absolutely the most popular new meat item in a generation. Once you taste Spam's tempting flavor, its tender, meaty goodness, you'll want to serve Spam often. Spam is so easy to prepare. Try it tomorrow. Use the simple recipes on the label. Ask your food dealer for S-P-A-M Spam. Join the thousands who say, whenever the occasion calls for delicious meat at our house, we serve Spam. Well, but I'm certainly in a fine mess. Oh, George, I just found out my granddaddy hasn't got the measles. Well, good. Now I can go and meet my little redhead. Oh, yeah, then you can say hello to my granddaddy because he went there, too. Good night, all. <laughs> us again next week, same time, same station, for another Burns and Allen show with Artie Shaw and his orchestra and the smoothies. Until then, this is Bud Easton reminding you to remember that cold or hot, spam hits the spot. <laughs> Have you tried Hormel Chili Con Carne? Even those who think they don't like chili do like Chili Con Carne the way Hormel makes it because it's different and everybody likes it. Double your money back if you don't like it. Try Hormel Chili Con Carne tomorrow. This is the National Broadcasting Company. Mm-hmm.